Rock 108. Hey, it's Ned hanging out here in the studio today. And we are still in this stupid pandemic. Bands still can't tour. They can't do a lot of things that we would normally do during the year 2020. So a lot of us are just counting down the days until we get to 2021 at this point. But one of the bands that's been around so long at this point, which is so amazing to see. They've been to Eastern Iowa plenty of times. And we were just talking about a little bit off camera about like when they show up, we show up. We're talking about the band Papa Roach. And I've got Tony Palermo, the drummer of Papa Roach, oh. out in his closet here. What's up? That's right. Hey, man. What an intro in my closet. Yeah, in, in, in your closet. <laughs> now, I've never, I've never been intro that way, which is great. Oh, well, hey, man. I, this <laughs> first there. I, I, I brought on the intro. I feel, I feel amazing for a second, dude. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah. So we got Tony hanging out with this man. I mean, first and foremost, we got to do the business thing where yep. we got to talk about this brand new greatest hits album that you got coming out. Greatest hits volume two is coming out on March 19th next year. Uh, what mm -hmm. songs are we expecting on a new greatest hits album, man? Um, all the greatest hits. Oh yeah. Well, of course, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, of course, um, the ever so, um, legendary, uh, uh, what's that song called? Last resort. Yeah. Oh yeah. Last resort. Um, uh, yeah. yeah uh you know taking it back to scars mm -hmm. um i think there are some newer ones uh from previous years like uh born for greatness possibly yeah yeah absolutely um i don't have a list in front of me right now um, right, yeah. <laughs> so i don't want to i don't want to misname anything but uh yeah it's gonna be cool man it's um you know it's it's pretty amazing uh to actually be able to put a greatest hits record together yeah. um i mean it says a lot for our fans it says a lot for the band's um tenacity and just willing to just go for it and and create new boundaries for ourselves hopefully and and mm -hmm. you know taking our fans on on a journey and, and uh man I mean, we couldn't be more grateful you know it's so cool to have. I mean, there's not a lot of bands out there that they can say they have two greatest hits albums. Unless you're <laughs> unless you're in Kiss, I mean, you probably have like 19 of them. But yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Like the same stuff, but it's cool and, and amazing to see how far you guys have come along since, I mean, yes. the time I saw you guys back in like 2000 at this point. Yeah. It was a long yeah, time that was pre That was pre-me. Yeah. So, exactly. um, I've been a Papa Roach fan for years, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Even before me. Um, no, that's, uh, it's, it's what a feeling man i mean you know obviously we miss being out live um yeah. but uh while we're on the album tip um yeah. i just finished uh, a couple weeks ago i just finished 15 or so new drum tracks for all the new songs Ooh, new um, songs. so yeah. i mean you know we've we've been kind of like posting stuff about it so it's not a secret but yeah we're right. you know obviously being quarantined we're we're thinking trying to get creative and and what can we do with this time? And it's like, well, no better time than to write a record. So um, yeah. I'm, I, I can't believe like how, I mean, I say this with every record cause it's always exciting to mm -hmm. write and record new music. Yeah. Uh, but this one is, this one's fire, man. It's got, it just has some like, just some deep cuts on it. And oh man, it feels so good to play drums too. And, and um, I had a great, I had a great session. Um, Jacoby's rapping some more and yeah, it seems like his raps on this are just like they're he's i don't want to say angrier but he has more right. he's got more intensity behind his raps i mean right. there's a lot to be kind of concerned about now and just expressing your mind through music uh, yeah. is is one thing that he loves to do uh, and especially with the so. year like this year that we've been having right now i think yeah. I've mentioned to a few other artists too. I think there's going to be like this kind of music renaissance next year because there's so much stuff to write about of all the craziness yeah. that's happening, either be it through pandemic or political or whatever it may be. There's just so much to say that an artist can really put out on some kind of album. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, lyricists are always looking for that, that uh, inspiration. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's been an overabundance of, of that this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, being stuck inside, and in your case, being stuck in a closet. I mean, I kind of <laughs> have a lot to say. <laughs> hey, it's okay though. I have I have PJ Harvey behind me and uh, my Slayer cover, so I'm oh, good. Absolutely, man. They, they keep me company. So, speaking of keeping company, I mean, obviously, working on writing a new album, which is fantastic. And it, real quick, I gotta you always gotta ask that question as a radio guy. Mm -hmm. When do you think it might happen? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I I know we're still actually Jacoby's down right now in LA, just finishing up some vocals. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it will go through the mixing mastering process and all that. Um, yeah. 
but you know, normally these things don't come out for like six months later mm -hmm. for, for six months after the, you know, the recording process. So, yeah. um, I think, you know, obviously a single will be out before, uh, you know, and right. You know, I want to be optimistic and, and say I'm, I'm hearing a few things about maybe possibly summer touring of next year. So I don't know. I mean, it's always been. Happen? Yeah, it's been fall, really. Yeah. You know, so I don't know if, if this vaccine kind of holds and if people are willing to take it and we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, so we have to have something out before, you know, we tour before it gets out there and oh, gets ready. ultimately. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. touring in general, too, man. I mean, I think next year with, I mean, we're, we're all, I mean, as much as you guys, too, where it's kind of at at this point, like, well, okay, what does touring look like next year? And even Ticketmaster, you know, the big, the big Kajunga Ticketmaster has like these new things about, you know, you have to prove that you've been vaccinated or you've had it before. I mean, yeah. what do you think about that, man? Just kind of seeing like from that perspective as an artist? Yeah, well, you know, going through all the cancellations um, earlier this year in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. you know, everybody went through who was on tour um, mm -hmm. and the insurance companies really just like, they did a quick COVID clause, I guess, mm -hmm. after. And so it really stiffed a lot of bands. Yeah. But I think, I think all these companies, um, you know, it's about liability now and, and nobody wants to be, you know, sued or, you know, so I, you know, I, I understand like there's going to be, um, I think Rolling Stone put out a whole article about all these new, uh, variables that are coming into play with, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So, you know, it's, it's going to, I'm curious to see how it develops, um, mm -hmm. legally and, and yeah, I mean, it's, I always thought that, you know, we're in the entertainment business and I always thought that, Oh, we're good, man. Everybody always, always will want to be entertained, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I never thought about like, what if there's a pandemic and nobody can be around and we play to crowds? It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's confusing, but it's also like, let's get a grip on it. Let's everybody just have an understanding of it. And yeah. Wear a friggin' mask, I guess. I mean, that's what, that's what they're saying. And mm -hmm. if that's the least we can do, we have to do, I mean, I've got mine, man. So, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm back in it. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, it's very, you know, it's very, um, it's a very minimal thing to do. And, and I don't understand, uh, I don't want to get super political or anything because that's right. not my vibe, but mm. people that are just crying out, they're, they're taking our freedom. It's like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's not that it's, yeah. you know, I, I, I can understand how some people's thought process is like, Oh, I don't want to be told what to do. You know, I mean, that's like punk rock band for one on one. You know, oh, so yeah, I understand that. But let's look out for ourselves and our neighbors and our, I mean, our family first. But you know, yeah, be healthy, so, Be healthy, man. I mean, the Asian culture has been doing it for, you know, however long. And I remember the first time going to, to Tokyo, mm -hmm. uh, and I was kind of like, wow, they're why are they wearing masks? Like, they, mm -hmm. do they think I'm sick? And it's like, yeah. no, 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 they wear it because they're sick. And they don't, and I'm like, oh, of course. And that's how respect. it's respect. Yeah, it makes sense. Respect. So yeah. anyway, that's that's my little rant. But um, it's not yeah. a it's not a hard thing. No, absolutely, man. You know, it's funny you mentioned that uh, that culture too. When I was I before the pandemic decided to just everywhere. Uh, my wife and I went to Italy. We went and took a nice trip to Italy and Rome. And uh, it was amazing how many people of the Asian culture were wearing masks. And I'm just like, oh, you know, that's a little, it's a little foreign to me. And now here yeah. we are and we're yeah. all doing the same damn thing. It's like, okay, I get it now. It's, yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah, you know? exactly. So and, we can and very respectful. Yes, absolutely. We can sit here and talk about masking and all that stuff. Yeah, no, we don't need to. You're right. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, we get it. But um, yeah, a, a few things that um, I I, I did, a, I rifling through your Instagram as I'm trying to figure out how to white balance a camera here in my life. Yeah, yeah um, it's all good. But um, one of my favorite videos that I found of you guys um, was a couple of years ago, you were on First We Feast with Sean Evans, where oh, you yeah. and I were eating bugs. What yes. Kind of I'm a huge fan of Hot Ones and everything that the yeah. Sean Evans guys do in the First We Feast. How was that yeah. kind of experience? You look like you were taking those bugs like a champ. I was, I was pretty much, yeah, I, I was cleaning my plate. Um, <laughs> I thought, you know, I, I, was, I was down for it. Um, you know, I always watch those shows like uh, 
Bear Grylls or or mm -hmm. um, whoever's frying up like those big uh, worms. I'm like, those look good. Right. And if I ever found those, if I was starving, I would just eat those. So ah. it was kind of like an opportunity to, you know, minus being trapped outdoors and mm -hmm. uh, lost in the forest to to actually experience something like that. And it it was cool, man. And and really what it comes down to is, is, um, obviously there's a, there's the mental thing where you have to like approach it and get past what you've grown up with, like Ooh, right. worms and Ooh, whatever. You need a bug. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. So, but the, but the protein value is, is incredible. Right. Um, <laughs> there's some know, health in there somewhere. There is. And, yeah. and it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. I actually, uh, took a uh, cricket powder, like they sell that and, and you know, so you throw yeah. that in your shakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually eating the bugs, like some of them were cooked, some of them were dehydrated. Yeah. So you've got like crispy ones, um, you know, scorpions crispy, were obviously crispy. Bugs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was, there was a June bug that we ate or yeah. we, uh, ate our own, but, um, it was, I think that was the dry, the dehydrated one. And it looked like you're just going to crunch into it, but it just yeah. sort of like, it just oh. sort of like, yeah, it was kind of like not a, it wasn't a good, uh, <laughs> It was sort of a letdown, right? Because yeah. you wanted it, you wanted some like substance in there, but yeah, it was just like, like, nice chewy it was like a bug. It was like a ghost shell of a June bug, and <laughs> it just poofed in your mouth. But um, <laughs> and then we at the end we did the uh, there was an actual an actual chef there. We did um, breakfast burritos, and you had to guess yeah which one had bugs and which didn't. And I think mm -hmm. I failed at that one. But um, oh, all right, but yeah, it was it was it was an experience. I mean, yeah. I actually haven't sought out any other cricket powder since then, but I'm not, I'm not, a, you know, <laughs> I don't deny. I mean, I, I would do it again. I was about yeah. to say, I'm like, are you still eating bugs? Is that yes. part of the diet? You know, not really. I give, we give them to our chickens now. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Wait, do you have urban chickens? Are, are you an urban yes. chicken? Part? Oh, that's awesome, yeah. man. I've always wanted to do that, but I just, uh, I don't, I just bought my first house this year, so I'm oh, still okay, trying cool. to like figure out that part of life still. Yes, yes. And um, I'm like, hmm, if I brought chickens here, would my neighbors be pissed? Well, okay, so real quick, you just get, uh, we just get hens because they lay the eggs. Oh, right, right, yeah. And then like where we live, you actually can't have roosters because they, they're just too loud and obnoxious. Yeah, they're crowing it up a, so, a party. Yeah, yeah, so um, just get, get yourself a little chicken coop, get some hens, and you'll have eggs. Dude, I've Amazing. got a perfect yard for it, so that'll work really Great. well. Yeah, well, here's your inspiration. <laughs> you know, and in, in, in Iowa in here too, man, it'd just be a normal day. I mean, you drive oh, yeah. out past any like small rural area, like in Waterloo or Cedar Falls or something like that, you're just going to be in you know in farmland. That's just how yeah. it is. Like, eh, we figured this out. Why not? Exactly. My wife yeah, would be very advantage. excited about that too. So I'm like, oh, free eggs, man. Heck yeah. Take. Oh, it's amazing going out and just grabbing the eggs and. I mean, you got to clean them and stuff, but yeah. Right, yeah, you got to do that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so digging around your Instagram a little bit more too, um, one oh, yeah. of the things I, um, I, I found was, uh, hopefully we can relate on the same world here, but I'm a huge Kiss fan, and I was looking okay. at some of the albums that you uh, highly influenced you, right. and Kiss Alive 2 was specifically one of those. What was like that first moment? Because there's so many artists that I have talked to that are like, oh, that first time I heard Kiss, man. I'm just like, man, there's so many people that just got – that like that was the moment that clicked yeah well it actually happened years before that um uh my mom had bought me the it's it's released as the original so it comes with the first three records right. yeah yeah so i still have that um mm. uh, but when alive 2 came out uh my grandfather took me to the store and, and he said why do you why did you have to pick the most expensive record in here you know this <laughs> is like 19 <laughs> yeah it's like 1977 or whatever yeah 78 maybe and uh and uh i was just like well this is this is the one i need mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so you know um taking it home and opening that that fold uh, it's yeah. just i still i still look at that and it just brings excitement because mm -hmm. my first concert was kiss yep nice um, <laughs> yeah and and i saw uh, the dynasty tour which is like right before ace basically kind of fell apart Right, yeah, yeah. He was falling apart during that tour, I think. Yeah, and I think Peter left right, right after, after her dynasty. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so, um, and, you know, obviously that, I've, I've told the story about how that's impacted my life and, mm -hmm. and the first show and just feeling the fire off the stage. And 
so you know um everything in that record sleeve just mm -hmm. was in front of me at that point and it was just like i'm doing this yeah. <laughs> i have to i have to do this and then that's kind of when the drums sort of mm -hmm. called out to me and just basically said hit me and and i've had that's to fun. you know i've had a lot of <laughs> a lot of years of setting up and tearing down and yeah yeah but anyway it's it's yeah that was it's amazing you know i mean i i'm not really such a huge fan anymore but but there's i still see pictures of kiss and i'm i still get that kid right feeling so yeah. i i really appreciate that yeah that's the excitement i don't know what it is man like every time i have talked to anyone uh, like in 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 the artist world i mean especially the guys uh from five finger death punch the mm -hmm. like uh, jason hook obviously no longer with the band anymore but um yeah. like zoltan and all them like oh yeah the first moment i heard kiss i'm just like what is it about that band like yeah. and, and for you opening up that gatefold cover and seeing yeah. that and for me it was seeing the movie detroit rock city back in like 98 99 oh, oh that's and, so much later <laughs> right, I know, dude. and seeing um and mind you i'm a late kiss fan let's call that i'm a late oh, okay kiss. okay i'm only 33 so yeah yeah i got some years on you yeah <laughs> but seeing that the bombs and the explosions and the oh, man freaking out it's just like i get it i have to do yeah I, I might not be a rock star, but I have to do something with music. I don't know what yeah. it is, but I have to do something cool. with music so I can meet this band. Have you ever met Kiss before? Um, I have. I've met, uh, I, if, I got a funny Gene Simmons story, actually. Oh, I'm curious. If, if you got time. It's <laughs> not do, that long, but that's fine. I, used to, I used to work at the Troubadour uh, in LA. And um, uh, where you sit, I did lights. So where you sit, where the soundboard and the lights, uh, the lighting console is, you mm -hmm. can see the front door, right? So I saw Gene walk in and I was like, oh, Gene Simmons. It's yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah. And I was, and you have to walk through backstage to get down to the stage to work and then come back the same way. And I, I actually, um, I had a kiss belt buckle, my love gun belt buckle on that I had from 79 or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I actually had that on that night. And I thought to myself, if I, if I see him, I'll maybe point it out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went down uh remark the stage come back up and he's actually in the dressing room and it's just him and one other person and i was like this is perfect yeah so i went up to gene i said hey gene uh you know my name's tony and shook his hand i said hey, i wanted to show you something and i went to reach down to my like gro he thought it was my groin area <laughs> I see where and, this is going. And, he, and he's all whoa 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 he turned his head he thought i was just gonna show him like a kiss tattoo on my junk or something <laughs> <laughs> So I, I lifted my shirt and I just like, no, 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 it's it's the love gun belt buckle, dude. And he's like, oh man, that's great. Thank you. And I was like, I think he was thanking me for not showing him anything yeah, private. Showing, showing him the special Tony, you know? So that, that was pretty funny. But yeah, I've met, uh, I actually met all those guys. We, we did a uh, Hellfest in France Ooh, and yeah. um, they were headlining. And mm -hmm. so we were hanging out with Doc, the, their manager, Doc yeah. McGee. And, and uh, our bass player, Tobin, and I, and we were just hanging out. And we actually got a photo, you know, when they do the, the group photos of the, you're, asking, you're supposed to buy it, but we- Of course, yeah. We got shuffled in there with like corn and stuff. So, um, <laughs> but it was cool. It was cool, man. It was, it was just a moment, you know, I'm like this giddy little kid standing there looking at these- These Eight foot tall, dudes. like, <laughs> except for Eric, he's a little shorter with boots on too. But right. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true yeah. like it's meeting your superheroes it's meeting those comic book heroes well, man that you just didn't and, expect to see and that's the thing too it's like you talked about like when you see them and it's just the whole the whole like kit man the whole makeup and mm -hmm. it's still it's still to me it's like one of the best things yeah. ever bands you know that a band has done yep mesmerizing and will it's, be yeah. in history forever from this pretty, forward that's man. pretty killer man it's pretty yeah. killer I love it, man. So I, again, I'm always going to be a huge Kiss fan, so no doubt. Um, yeah. I'm also a big fan of tattoos. I'm still working on oh, cool. a sleeve right here of all video games because I'm a huge video game nerd. I love okay. everything from Atari up until now. Oh, so do you um, have like the joystick <laughs> tat a joystick back piece? Yeah, well, not back piece, <laughs> but I'm getting to that point. <laughs> nice. So um, I recently saw a big spaceman tattoo right up here. Right. With you, um, yeah. Where did the spaceman tattoo come from, and wh what's the kind of story behind that? Or yeah. Okay. So spaceman. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I mean, you know, just being on tour uh, 
for so long and, and we tour her so much. Um, mm -hmm. I, I literally, at one point I was trying to conceptualize a new tattoo and, yeah. and I was like, man, I just had this feeling of like, I feel like we're just, we're, we're gone so much and it's so fast and like next city, next city, next city. Mm -hmm. I just felt like sometimes it's just like we're floating above the earth and yeah. just watching everything happen so fast under you. So I'm like, hmm, space theme. So, um, I was, uh, I was at a, a buddy's in Hungary. He's a, he's an amazing tattoo artist, uh, mm. Chaba, Chaba Kiss. And, uh, his last name's Kiss. Hey, I'll figure, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, he, you know, he's been a friend of ours for a while now and, uh, he's an amazing artist. So I, I was like, I need to get something from him. And, and yeah. uh, we were just in his apartment and, uh, I was like, ah, so I got, I got the space theme and then it just transpired into an astronaut with in like a floating mm -hmm. uh angle so just that's what i felt like at the time i was like we're you know like i like i said everything's so fast and yeah yeah sometimes I, you just don't feel like you're touching the earth you know right yeah yeah man that's that's why i love the stories behind tattoos you know you always see like yeah. Like and and not every tattoo has to have a story. You can just enjoy it getting a oh, yeah, tattoo yeah. after a you while. Just get but, a little flash, yeah. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's just another day. But seeing like how an artist, uh, like when he's working on mine, you know, I have this vision in my head. But as the artist, he has the vision in his head, and ninety percent, mm -hmm. ninety to ninety, ninety nine percent of the time, his vision's way better than mine. <laughs> he's the artist. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, like that looks way better than that's, I'm thinking of just like a stamp, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's how I ended up with this this uh, astronaut so big on my arm. He's like, oh, no, we got to go big. Like, yeah. like he's right there floating. I'm like, I don't know if I want <laughs> want it that big. And then yeah. you know, you just have to put the trust in in the artist, and you know, mm -hmm. they they've seen how things apply to skin and, and, you know, I've always wanted color and he's like, Nope, you don't have the right skin for color. And I'm like, come on, man, just, just a little, a little red, blue, I, a little something, you know, nothing. So yeah, he's, he's turned me off to that. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm not going to have any colored tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. Why not? So, yeah. <laughs> so I won't try to take up too much of your time. I know you probably got a busy schedule ahead of you, man, but um, a couple last things I got to ask uh, real quick aside from working on the album and kind of, and taking care of the hens, uh, what else are you dealing with <laughs> doing in quarantine? I mean, what's kind of keeping you busy around this time? Yeah. Um, okay. So actually I'm starting, uh, I'm starting a cover band, uh, with, I used to play in a band called unwritten law. Um, yep. and our bass player, Pat and I are super good friends. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm like, dude, let's, let's start a cover band, man. Like, cause we, we can play out locally here. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause there's not that many people, you know? Um, so we've been working on, we have about 14 songs, you know, uh, we're creeping into the nineties now, but we've started in the seventies and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everything from the cars to like the cult. Um, yeah. uh, so yeah, we're just kind of building up our, our, uh, our catalog here. And, and, um, so that's been fun. Um, mm -hmm. And my wife and I started a little side business. She's, she's super into gardening and landscaping. So cool. we're trying our, our hand at like a, a succulent business. Um, oh, we we found cool. that I was, yeah, we found that that was actually something uh, she was alerted to it. And she's like, really? I'm like, you, why? Okay, cool. People yeah. will <laughs> buy succulents <laughs> online and you ship them to them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so super low startup cost. I mean, yeah, less than like 500 bucks, whatever. Well, you know, and, that's, um, that's a lot cheaper than what I'm doing right now, which is having oh. a baby in about two weeks. Oh uh, yeah. You're oh. yeah. <laughs> well, wait till done, Tony, wait I'm till, saying? wait till they're 13. And after dinner, right after dinner, they're like, I'm hungry. You're like, you just had dinner, dude. So <laughs> why child? Why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those are just a few things. And, and I'm always working on our house. We have a, of 1911 farmhouse that, uh, oh, as you cool. can tell, uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is unfinished in areas. And uh, so we're just, yeah, just doing all the stuff, man. That's part of the fun of owning a house, isn't it? You're never yeah. done working on it. There's always something else that needs to be done. It's amazing. I'm like, can we just ever maybe buy a, a house that's finished? Yeah, just done. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you bought something from 1911. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the Titanic yeah. was sinking around that time. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> who, who would have thought? I mean, yeah, but it's fun though. I enjoy, I, I love power tools and I love all that stuff, man. Yeah. There's something about it. When you buy that house, you're just like, I am now a carpenter. Yeah. 
I will do yeah. things now. <laughs> yeah, when I moved, we moved in, I'm sure Home Depot had, they had me on camera like every day. And they're probably like, <laughs> this guy's, he's here every day. Getting something, you know, oh, I need something. a ladder. Oh, I need a shovel now. Oh, oh I need everything. This. Yep. It's, it, yeah. uh, we, we eventually transitioned from going from Toys R Us as kids to now Menards yes. or Home Depot is the place you go every single week. Like, oh, we're doing the weekly that's, Menards trip. Yeah, that's the other, the other adult toy store, I call it, is <laughs> exactly. Home Depot or Lowe's or something. And you, and you know what? <laughs> they try to make it easier on you, too, because now they have, like, food section. They're like, well, you're here. You're oh, here every week. So I'm going to give, well, here's milk. You probably need milk along with your power tool set. So they and, make it easier for yeah. you. Yeah. Taco trucks are in front of Home Depot's in LA. There you go. See, perfect. It's a one-stop shop, man. I got so, it all over for you. So we had to move out of LA, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and out the door you went. No more taco trucks. <laughs> That's one thing I do miss. But anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. Me oh, right with you. I just want tacos right now. Okay. Last uh, question I'm going to ask you, and then I'll let yeah. you do your jam. Uh, are there any bands? I mean, obviously, with things kind of going and crazy right now, a lot of bands are kind of like surfacing on YouTube or Spotify or whatever it may be. Mm. Is there any bands out there that you're just like, damn that that band's pretty good i'm pretty excited for those guys uh yeah i like uh i, I mean they're a couple friends of mine but um this band ages ages okay. uh, spelled a-e-g-e-s yeah um they're they're super cool and i think they just put out a, a new record um that's you know they just put it out because they're like what else are we doing right now mm -hmm. um so check them out they're cool, cool. um and I know, you know, Fever 333 is coming with some new stuff. Uh, we we love, love those guys. I love band, dude. Oh, uh, so good. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a live, it's just such a live thing, man. It is, um, yeah. Holy you have to crap. see it, you know. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, I've honestly, I've been sort of quarantining myself from music, too. Just, like I said, trying to concentrate on this cover thing and, and mm -hmm. our new stuff that we just did. But, um, um do you have any that I should listen to? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a few. Um, one of them, I'll, I'll throw them your way right now. They're actually out of Iowa. A band named Saul. Okay. Um, and so, Saul? Yeah, Saul. S-A-U-L. Oh, Saul. Yeah, great guys. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they just signed with, I believe, uh, I, forget, I forget what label it was called. Spine Farm. And um, so around with those guys. And I think David Draymond oh, okay, yeah. co-wrote something with them recently, too. Um, okay. And they're fantastic. Cool. I would say you were three, three, three as well too. I think I can agree with you on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, this band's been around for a little bit. Um, I think they're kind of transitioning their sound a little bit, but called the uh, Architects. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. They're fantastic. I love those guys. Oh, yeah, man. we we like uh, we've hung with Sam a bit. Uh, he's cool, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, man, so. he's English. Yeah. You're right. either you're either a prick or you're super cool. <laughs> you gotta say it like a prick. You're a damn prick, yeah. aren't you? You're either a damn prick <laughs> or you're effing cool. No. Uh, uh, yeah, those guys are rad, man. Just yeah. crazy, crazy writing. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Legit. Absolutely. Great drummer. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Tony, man, yeah. it was such a pleasure having you, dude. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out and having a good time. Oh, thanks for having me. To have Greatest Hits Volume 2, a brand new Papa Roach album on. Yep. Okay. I mean, it's yeah, that's right. pretty busy. And screw 2020. We got to get 2021 going here, man. Holy crap. It's it's time. It's time. I, I like that one one quick thing. I like somebody posted like, why do we have to set the clocks back and gain another hour in this year? I'm like, no doubt. Yeah. Can we just screw this whole daylight savings thing? Put it, they put it best, man. Yep. No doubt. So before we call it a day though, um, we post this up at rock108.com. So we have to do a quick, like two or three second screenshot. So that way we have an oh. image to go with it. So let me try this camera thing Ooh, let me, for the 90th let me get my, time. Let me get my Bowie shirt in here. Ooh, yeah. See, you went, you want the band. I got the, you know, Mr. Radio guy over here. Look at me go. All right. So, so yeah. Yeah. Shameless promotion. That's how I wrote that. Welcome to radio. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just make a funny face, thumbs up. I don't care what you do. We're going to do this thing. Let me, I'm going to try one more time. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, nope. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll do this. Okay. So in three. Oh, two, coming out. Oh, oh, maybe. Hold on. Uh, maybe. I think you might be. All right. All right. We'll give it a shot one more time. So, okay. In three. Oh. Uh, Am I losing you again, Tony? Come on. We're losing you. What what happened? I don't know. Are you losing me? No, well. Weird. 
You're, you're, you're slowing down like a 56K modem. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm running on. Isn't that the newest thing? I think so. Well, from a house from 1911, it's possible. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> we'll give it a shot and uh, we'll see what happens. I'll just do this and then, I don't know, I'm losing your video like crazy. Don't right. Oh, my God. All right. All ah, right. Just pause. Really? Let's see what happens. Oh, now you're kind of coming back. God, I'm sorry. No, nah, you're cool, man. You're cool. I mean, hey, well, I we'll understand. and I'm having white balance issues too. We're having all sorts of fun. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'll just try to grab something from the video. No big deal, man. But okay, cool. I'll, I'll call it a day for you, man. So thank you so much, dude. And uh, we'll hopefully see you on tour, hopefully a lot sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, man. Uh, good talking to you. Thanks for having me and uh, be safe out there. Congrats on your new house. Thanks, man. You too. I'll see you later. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bye. See ya.